In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. On Halloween night, Nick Weber leads his friends to a mysterious cemetery to seek the truth of a local legend that refuses to die. Stalked by angry spirits, no, no. the teenagers must face their fears of the unknown if they want to survive until dawn. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Every town has a legend. A haunted house cloaked in fantasy where children fear to tread. A hospital bustling with life that reeks of death. Everyday reminders of past transgressions, suicide, murder, blasphemy. The legends survive the years, feeding our imaginations and sometimes urging us to question our beliefs. Those who dare to experience the supernatural firsthand seek personal answers to timeless questions. When they tell their story, the legend is reborn for someone new. Green Lake, Wisconsin, once known as the village of Dartford, was settled in the mid-1800s. Lured by the majestic shores of Green Lake, pioneers built this small farming community on the trade of grain. As with most small towns, its history is rich in folklore and urban legend. Most tales are passed down for pleasure, but there are others whispered in the darkness, warning those who dare to uncover the truth. In the center of Green Lake lies an old cemetery which stands as testament to the town's past and to those who once lived there. Legend says that it's haunted. Let's go. On dark nights, when they have nothing better to do, local teens test the legend for themselves. I think I see the mausoleum. I want to check out the Indian graves first. It's creepy. Come on, let's go. Inside Dartford Cemetery is an old mausoleum, the final resting place of some of the town's pioneers. So, who's going first? This was her idea. Okay. Mm -mm. 
Okay, I'll go first. So, what's supposed to happen now? Now we wait. <laughs> this is stupid. Tell him what happened on Halloween. I will as soon as he gets up here. Okay, so what happened on Halloween? First of all, you have to remember, this happened to people from our school. People we know. What? You're gonna be late. Halloween, 2005. 16-year-old Nick Weber lives with his mother in Montello, Wisconsin. 25 miles outside of Green Lake. Get a move on, babe. Uh, any big plans for tonight? Oh, just the usual. Sex, drugs, ritualistic killings. Where are my keys? They're by the door, Mom. <sighs> Since the recent divorce of his parents, Nick doesn't see much of his mom. My mom's work schedule and my school schedule didn't always work too well together. Listen, I'm gonna be late tonight coming home, but I have leftovers in the fridge for you, okay? Ritualistic killings, huh? Yeah, or I might just go over to Christian's house and watch movies. Good, happy Halloween, honey, and don't be late for school, okay? Love you. Love you. Montello's population is only 1,400. So there are not a lot of things for teenagers to do around town. Nick looks for an interesting place where he and his friends can spend Halloween night. I came across a website that had a database of different places in Wisconsin that had haunted locations. Chad Lewis is the creator and webmaster of Unexplained Research. Lewis has spent over 10 years researching and collecting stories from people who have had paranormal experiences related to legends like the one surrounding the Dartford Cemetery. I'm interested in folklore and urban legend, really out of the same reasons people have been interested in it since the beginning of time, curiosity. I don't know what happens when we die. I don't know if we're alone in the universe, but I really want to find this out. After launching his website, Lewis was inundated with emails from young people performing what they call legend trips casual investigations of allegedly haunted places. What they want is to go and visit these places and then decide for themselves whether or not they believe it's haunted. Chad investigates and then profiles the legends he receives from his readers. One, the legend of Witch Road gets a lot of attention. It was supposedly named after a witch that once lived there. Her house still stands in the woods. One of my favorite stories about Witch Road is a couple were there with their four-year-old son. I'm gonna take some pictures of the house. Five minutes, Jeff, okay? I really don't like it out here. What are you doing here? Michael? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? He said he was talking to that nice little girl who lives in the woods. Jeff? Jeff, we're leaving right now! Don't do that! We are leaving. 
Others have had similar experiences on Witch Road. But the identity of the little girl remains a mystery. The ghost of Hilbert Road is another popular legend. It should be right up ahead. The website said something about a tree on the right-hand side of the road. Well, slow down, slow down. I think I see it. In the early 1900s, a young woman was killed on that road I mean, are you all right? Have you seen my daughter? Dude, let's get out of here! But yet it's not she that is haunting that place. It is her father. The more popular legend trips propose a dare, something the seeker must do in order to prompt a supernatural occurrence. One example is the mausoleum in the center of Dartford Cemetery. The dare is that if you stand or sit on the mausoleum, that someone or something will push you off. Nick is intrigued. I didn't necessarily believe in ghosts, but I always thought it was a possibility Later that afternoon, Nick tells his best friend about the local legend. He knows that if anyone is willing to take the dare, it's Christian Adams. I have got an idea for tonight. Ooh. We are going to a haunted cemetery. Ooh, scary. Yeah. I looked it One up way I describe myself would be a troublemaker, kind of disregarded the rules. Really, I looked up this website about the cemetery in Green Lake. It's an old pioneer cemetery, and people have supposedly seen all kinds of ghosts walking around in there. An Indian chief. There's this dare that if you sit on top of this mausoleum, a ghost will push you off. Dude, you're gullible as hell. But I'm game, let's do it. The dare intrigued us because it was actually something that we could try. What are we doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Get off my car, John boy. Nick and Christian hang out with John Lloyd. In high school, we played a lot of prank jokes on a lot of people, and uh, everybody knew us because of that. We're going to a haunted cemetery tonight, John. A cemetery? Nick, we need to get you a girlfriend. No, this, no you're really going to love this. No, dude, you got exactly two seconds to get off my car. Look, I got baseball practice anyway. I'll see you guys later. Peace. If I was you, I wouldn't tell John about the dare. We didn't really want to tell him about the whole dare thing. He scares kind of easy, so we decided to just kind of withhold that information from him. After school. I'm a Polish immigrant. I was raised by strict Roman Catholic parents, so as far as ghosts, I never really put much thought into it. You don't actually believe this stuff, do you? No, not really, but it will freak John out. Then come on, then let's go get him! Ah. 
Baseball season's over, Johnny. Give it up. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Are you going with us tonight or what, John? Nah, I think I'd rather go to a party. I did not like the idea of going to a cemetery on Halloween. There's no point to put yourself through something that is going to terrify you when you really don't have to. Oh, come on, you big baby. What would say to you? I think I'm going to spend my night among the living. In this town, what difference does it make? Think about your friends. Think about your fans. You can't abandon us like this. Come on, John. It'll be fun. I promise. OK. All right, then stop sucking and let's roll. I was raised to believe that there is no paranormal, that there is no such thing as ghosts, no haunted places, no haunted houses. Are we going or what? I thought you didn't want to go to the cemetery. I want to go somewhere. He's right. Let's get out of here. So who's buried at this cemetery? Bunch of old pioneers, some uh, Civil War soldiers. Sounds like a blast. One of them is an old Indian chief. You want to go pay tribute to the water gods one day? He never made it. Supposedly his spirit is still there, and he doesn't like it when people are in the cemetery at night. <laughs> Don't Sorry. Stop. <laughs> Give me a heart attack. Sorry, honey. Oh, <laughs> listen, you guys just have him home by midnight, okay? Yeah. So, who is she supposed to be? Marilyn Manson? <laughs> Good one. This has potential. When we first got a glimpse of the cemetery, it was the creepiest place I've ever seen. Hey, you coming? Did anybody bring a flashlight? Now how are we supposed to see in there? Good enough. That's some real firepower.
it seemed like everything in the cemetery was watching you. As we walked through the gravestones, you could see that they had been worn down with time. Kid a kidder, Weber. Move your butt. I had never felt anything like that in my life. John, come stand right here. <laughs> no way. Are you coming? I went along and kind of put it behind me. Knock, knock, anyone home? Bring it out. Hello? Wakey, wakey. I figured that provoking Wake it up a ghost there. to Come do out. something might actually work. Hello, bring out your dead. I guess no one's home. See how much you left when you got a mouthful of busted teeth. John, I was just kidding. This is stupid. I'm going back to the car. <laughs> John, <laughs> look, you made him mad. Yeah, I know. Here you go get him. John, wait. After you scanned my ear, I was not only terrified, but very angry. Uh, Nick knows that I don't like to be scared. John, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were going to freak like that. I didn't. It's just I'm over this cemetery, and really, what's the point? Why don't we just go back to Montello and go to the party? We were kidding, John. We'll go home soon, I promise. Truce for now. Let's go. Tina girl from my physics class definitely wants your body. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm serious. Have you seen the way she looks at you? She does talk to you a lot. In the back of my head, there's a creepy feeling that 
Well, there's somebody there that didn't want us there. I didn't really want to act afraid in front of my two buddies. Look at this. Christian notices a large crack in the mausoleum. This wasn't here before we sat down, was it? I don't think so. Uh, I think we should move. Yeah, you're probably right. I knew that that crack wasn't there before. No, I'm not falling for another one of your pranks. It felt like somebody had pushed me. This wasn't a prank. We were standing right here. And then someone else is here. What? What the hell was it then? You probably just fell, John. Yeah. No, I was pushed off. You're kidding me, right? No, I'm serious. Something pushed me off. It just so off. happened that the one person that we neglected to tell about, well, there, that's the person that actually gets pushed off. It worked. The, the dare, it actually worked. What dare? If you sit on this mausoleum, a ghost will push you off. What? I'm going back to the car. No! We can't get back to the car now. Don't you want to see if this is real? I do know. I felt it. I'm saying, I want to see if this is for real. I guess I'll go back with him. Okay? I'll see you two guys in the car. Later. I was intrigued by what had happened to John. This might actually be a more interesting night than we had hoped. Do you think it's a good idea leaving Christian back there? Why not? If he's so determined to find something, then let him find something. I was worried about what might happen if we split up. What? What is it? What is it? It's probably just Christian trying to sneak up on us. I'll go get him. I'm going back to the car. sound of children. Why would there be children out this time of night near a cemetery? getting the feeling that something was watching me and I could see like shadows out of the corner of my eye. John?
Christian? This isn't funny. To see the names and dates to change on a headstone, they're changing for some odd reason, and I didn't want to be there to find out why. Oh, no, no, stop, 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 stop it. It's Nick. It's me, John. It's all right. What's wrong? I had not a clue what was happening. Whatever was showing itself wanted us to leave. Christian explores the oldest graves in the pioneer section. A lot of these tombstones had this kind of a bluish gleam around them. It was just really creepy because there's absolutely no reason why I should have been there. I noticed that there were these peculiar tombstones they were very thin tombstones with this oval thing on top. And I look back and there was five of these weird looking tombstones. I know there was seven when I looked the first time. At that point I, I became a lot more scared. Someone's here. They were just standing there. What do I do if, you know, they start coming towards me? Should I run? What does the website say about the mausoleum? It just says that if you sit on it, you'll be pushed off. Well, who's buried there? I don't know. Something's wrong with him. Christian, what happened? Let's get out of here. I didn't tell the guys about the experiences that I had because I felt like maybe I was the only one. I didn't really want them to say that they saw the same things that I saw. If they had said that, then that would have really too much for me to handle at that point. For all of that to happen at once puts so many questions in your head. That's probably why we weren't talking to each other because we were thinking too much about what had happened.
See you tomorrow, man. See you guys tomorrow. Nick searches for any information about the cemetery that can help him come to terms with what happened there. The mausoleum is rumored to house the remains of several children who died of polio, but he can find no evidence of a crack on its surface. I think that the crack may have actually been the way that they escaped from the mausoleum. It made me feel uneasy that we had possibly disturbed the spirits of these children. It just puzzled me why these things happened and why they happened to us. Nick thinks his dream is a message from beyond. The point of the dream was that I shouldn't go back. The next day, he tells his friends everything. My dream, it was, it was weird. It wasn't just ghosts of dead people. It was, like, evil. I saw two kids at the cemetery. They were standing right in front of me. I thought I was going crazy. 
I saw something too. Yeah, me too. It was kind of surprising and reassuring to all of us that we all kind of had things happen to us. You couldn't pay me to set foot inside another cemetery. I don't know what would have happened if we had stayed there that night. You're saying right in front of me. It's a very crazy. scary and traumatic experience for me. me and the three of us know we're not crazy, right? <laughs> Who the hell's gonna believe us? As the story of Dartford Cemetery passes on from one person to the next, the legend trip continues. I was pushed off. It was evil. After hearing the rumors and doing some research on his own, 18-year-old Corbin Van Buren and his friends visit the graveyard in the fall of 2006. Let's go. We were interested in going up just for the thrill. And we figured everything we had heard was a joke. I think I see the mausoleum. I want to check out the Indian chief's grave first. What is it? I thought I heard something. Don't worry about it. As we were walking through the cemetery, we would hear twigs snapping behind us, leaves rustling around. We had the feeling of something following us. Corbin inspects the grave of a fabled Indian chief. The rumor about him was that you would see him walking around in his full uniform, full headdress. That is creepy. Let's go to the mausoleum. Hang on. I said, hang on. There's somebody else here. It's probably a family checking up on their relative's grave. In the middle of the night? Come on, let's go. We saw what we thought to be a figure walking through the cemetery. At the time, we just thought it was maybe one of our friends playing tricks on us. Now, you have to remember, Corbin tells his friends everything he has learned about the legend. Let's get out of here. That's when we realized that it was not one of our friends trying to play a trick on us. All of us were scared to the point where we felt it wanted us out.
What was that? I don't know, man. We didn't know what happened. It was something that couldn't be naturally explained. What happened to your arms? The marks seem to be maybe an animal claw of some sort. Corbin is struck by a sudden pain. It felt like someone was just taking a knife and stabbing it right through my leg. <laughs> we knew it wasn't anything from brush or trees or anything on that order. We knew it had to have been something that had gotten to us. That night, Corbin compares his encounter with the ones posted on Chad Lewis's website. After having that experience, we do believe the other stories that we had heard. To this day, Legend trippers continue to explore Dartford Cemetery, tempting fate and hoping to get an answer about what lies beyond the physical world. But John, Christian, and Nick will never return. If we had stayed there longer, who knows how physical they could have gotten. It was just a good thing that we had left when we did. If there's spirits there, there could be spirits anywhere. Spirits might be all around us. I think that the spirits are all still in the cemetery, but some things are better left, left alone.